Hi everyone, this is Sheila with Successful Women Talk. I want to say thanks for joining me today. Very special guest, Ruth Sherman today. We are talking with Ruth, Ruth about public speaking. She's a public speech coach and consultant. She does a lot of video training, teaches uh, the concept of being having charisma, having being charismatic on video. Just some really good tips and tricks on how to present yourself better when speaking, when both in front of and when just in front of a crowd, whether you're in front of a crowd or whether you're in front of a video. Just a lot of very interesting tips and tricks. She's um, she's helped entrepreneurs. She's helped the p politicians. She's helped actors and actresses. So just a really neat lady with a great story and uh, the ability maybe to help you be a little bit more comfortable when you're out there giving those public speeches or doing videos like this. Hey, don't forget to go over to our website, www.successfulwomentalk.com. Join the community and we'll help you with business tips and tricks. We'll help you figure out how to get more raving fans. And we'll see you on the other side of the interview. Thanks. Hi, everyone. This is Sheila Butler with Successful Women Talk. I want to say thank you for joining me today. Super excited about today's guest. We have Ruth Sherman. Now, she is a communication public speaking rock star. So I, I couldn't even begin to begin to list everything that she's done. But in general, what she does, she's a, she's a CEO, celebrity, and entrepreneurial speech coach. She coaches C-level executives. Um, she coaches uh, politicians, a lot of people on communicating and speaking and actually doing video type communication presentation skills. So help me in welcoming Ruth. Hey everyone. Hey Sheila, how are you? I am terrific. I can't tell you again. I, I really, I, it would have taken me a long time to list everything. that You've done this a long time and you have done so many amazing things, but I so appreciate you being on the show today. Thank you. I'm just delighted to be here and uh, and share what I know so that people can ramp up. Well, I love that. You know, I've watched a lot of your videos and you make it seem so natural. But before we get into that, I want to just ask you a little bit. Tell us a little bit more about your background and how you got started in this business. Sure, absolutely. Well, um, my first career, and this is ancient history, was as a performing artist. So I have a little bit of a background in showbiz, so to speak. I was a jingle singer. That's what I made my money at. I wanted to make money. I didn't want to, you know, be a starving Broadway actress. So I decided to, to make money. And jingles was one way that you could make money as a singer. And that was what my training was. Um, and then I realized that there are no senior citizen jingle singers. <laughs> and <laughs> I was watching the business change. And certainly I wasn't a senior citizen uh, uh, at the time, I'm much closer to that now, but but uh, as I looked ahead, I thought, well, I had to find something else to do. I had an obligation to provide uh, an income for my family, and I thought, well, what was going to turn me on? And one thing led to another. I looked into law. I looked into social work. I really like people, and I thought, well, gosh, you know, none of these professionals can really speak very well and they all need to. Aha, that's where I can add some value. So I just changed my costume from jeans and leather pants and, <laughs> you know, my musical look and uh, to, a, to a suit and a white shirt. And I started pounding the pavement, picking up the phone and, and calling just like I had done uh, as a performer and um, got my first job. I don't know. It's well over 20 years now with a law firm and um, you know the rest is history I built it from there and since then I have managed to uh, narrow my corporate work mostly to decision makers to so to the CEOs of public and private companies all over the world I've worked all over the world it's been fascinating and uh, my celebrity work includes Oscar winners and international bold face names that everybody would know and that I am dying to tell you but cannot I am bound by confidentiality <laughs> so and of course I work with small business entrepreneurs over the last two or three years people just like your audience just like me just like you perhaps so you know that that's the trajectory I love that now let me ask you did you were as a young child were you always kind of were you an extrovert and therefore c communicating was just easy for you I was a shy shy introverted child so it was a double whammy shy and introverted they're different you know um, so you know, of course, as a shy, introverted child, I dreamt of becoming a movie star. 
which makes perfect sense, you know. <laughs> um, interestingly enough, mo most of the celebrities that I work with are also shy or introverted or both. It's kind of an interesting thing. But uh, fortunately, my parents uh, saw something in me. They saw that I had musical talent. So they gave me piano lessons and, and voice lessons as I grew older. And, and I think, frankly, it was because they were worried for my future since I was such a terrible, terrible student. <laughs> terrible student. I hated school. I hated all the, you know, I, hated, I just hated it. But I could sing. And to their eternal credit, they fostered that in me. And then that was what... That was where my self-worth was, so that's what I decided to do. Fortunately, it worked out. Oh, see, I love that story because I love that your parents were able to notice your strengths early on because so many parents think their kids need to become doctors or lawyers or whatever, and they're pushing them to do something that maybe not is their true, authentic self. So I love that story. Yeah, thank you. And, um, you know, it was quite valuable, and really they did go against their better judgment <clears throat> excuse me, and of course the social pressure of, of other parents to not push me into something that I would have been just horrible at and unhappy. And, uh, you know, and, and uh, so it is to their credit. And um, I've done the same thing for my kids. They are both creatives and, um, yep, so one's a musician, one's an artist, and go for it, girls. I love that. You're just encouraging them to, to, go, to, to go down that path that they're almost already on. Absolutely. Just go with what you, what you love. Go with you what you love. You know, another thing I love that you said, Ruth, is that you see you've been very successful. So people like me look up to you and go, wow, look what she's done. But you know what I love that you said that you were a terrible student. I was a terrible student. I always say I was a good daughter, terrible student, social butterfly. I only love school because of the social aspect of it. So I, I like that you're able to admit that and, and to show people that it's OK. You had to find your path and you have. Yeah, thank you. Yes, exactly. So, you know, you know very well what that was like. You you had the social thing, fortunately. I didn't even have that. You know, I was like, not, I, I was dying to be popular. I became a cheerleader, but that didn't even help. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it was, um, you know, it, you don't, it, school is a one-size-fits-all type of thing, most schooling. And so it wasn't my one size that fit. And that's okay. That is okay. I love that. Let me ask you this. Do most of the people that you work with, are they mainly, are they introverts? Are they people, uh, are they shy? I know you said there's a difference between the two. But are, or are they people that are really just needing to kind of polish their skill sets? What do you see most? Uh, all of that. Some people come to me because they're terrified they think they're going to die if they get on stage. Others come to me because they hate the way they look on camera. In fact, that is universal. Everyone hates the way they look on camera, especially those first few times. Um, even my Oscar-winning celebrity clients, amazing. You know, you would think those people with the, all of their experience would, would have it together, but I have to force them to look at themselves uh, on, on camera. But um, uh, other people come to me because they are already good and they want to get better. They know that it is vital for them to be able to get on stage and speak persuasively uh, or to be able to sit down in front of the camera like you and I are today and be able to connect with an audience that is on the other side of that camera lens. So it really runs the gamut. Interesting. And you know what's funny also that you said that I found interesting is that not all celebrities, when we see them and go, oh, they're just so comfortable in front of the camera. But from what I've read and from what you said as well, is some of them really are not. It is, it is tough for them also, and they actually get into character, which makes, I guess, a little bit easier. It does, and it is a little bit easier for people who are trained in the acting field because they're, they're putting on a show when they understand that, and it's, it's, natural, it's natural for them to be able to put on that other self. But, you know, there, there's something that happens with my regular clients, my non-celebrity and non-acting professional clients, and that is they've always been told to just... Be yourself, you know, and that is very vague. And what I tell them is, just like actors, we all have many selves. We are different in, uh, in with our family than we are in front of our clients. We're different in this type of, of an environment than we are in having a, a, a glass of wine with our friends. We're different with our bosses than we are with our pets, of course. So we adapt, and we adapt to those situations, those different communication environments, without any training, just 
naturally. And so what I try to help my clients understand is that this is just another self. This performing self, this ability to be on camera, be on stage is just another self that can be learned and it is just technique. That's all it is. It's all about how you look and sound and of course what you say. I guess it's almost like a Michael Jordan was not the best basketball player until he became Michael Jordan. That took a lot of practice. So I'm guessing that speech training and communication is is very similar to that. It is. It is very practice heavy. And this is the biggest obstacle for my busy clients. Uh, the, when I tell them what it takes, what, when they see a really top speaker, I don't know who that would be, but let's just say they see a really, like, let's just take Steve Jobs. I was he thinking rested. the same thing, Steve Jobs. Yeah, I could read your mind. I love that. Um, so, <laughs> so Steve Jobs, great, great presenter. I, I identified Jobs in my Fast Company um, column as the greatest CEO presenter of all time. There's nobody that came close to him. There's nobody that's come close to him since, at least not that I've seen. People, uh, Steve Jobs' whole mojo was getting out there and looking as casual and relaxed and, you know, like this was just another day at the beach, right, for Steve Every word was scripted. Every move was practiced. It was stagecraft. He embraced that. It, it made him very charismatic. And of course, we're all aware of the great visuals and the slides. And he used props. So that's another great technique. And his props were always his products that he was passionate about. So when he would bring out the new iPhone or the new iPad or the new MacBook Air or whatever it was, he was he was passionate and he was able to put that passion forward and that's really i think what made him successful but it was not for no reason it was not a miracle he worked at it i love that and i'm glad that you shared that as well because i think people like myself look at him and go why well, i don't think i could ever speak that well and eloquently and casual on stage well maybe he didn't either he really had to work on that like you said to get to that point as well he made it look easy, and that's what the best speakers and performers do. They make it look easy, but it's not. Well, let me ask you this. A lot of our listeners are not celebrities, but they are people that are every like some of the clients that you work with every day, entrepreneurs, and maybe they're pitching their products at trade shows, or maybe they're pitching their products on a video, or maybe they're pitching their products to a Nordstrom's where they're trying to get their, their actual products on the shelf. What can those types of entrepreneurs do to help better their presentation skills so they're a little more comfortable when they're actually pitching those products so they do get on the shelf. One of the things that people need to be able to do is to tell stories. So that's, again, a, a rather a vague instruction. Stories come in all types of forms and shapes and sizes, in my opinion. And you want to be able to tell stories that Whomever you're speaking to, whatever, whoever your audience is, whether it's your, a buyer at a retailer or whether it's an audience of potential buyers, uh, there are different types of stories that you would tell. Now, the main story, the, one of the best stories you can tell is how you got started, very much like what you asked me, Sheila. Uh, you know, you asked me to tell my story, and so I've practiced that story. I've worked on it. I condensed it for this uh, particular event. Now, when I did this story, when I did my one-day live event in New York in the spring, it took me a half hour to get through that story. I had slides. I was telling all kinds of different things. So you adapt it. But the other thing that you do is to tell client stories. Use client examples. What has have you done to help a client? And how has that client been successful? So where was that client before that client worked with you or bought your stuff? And where is that client today? And depending, again, on your audience is, that is the kind of story that you can tell that draws people in and really makes them connect with you. The other thing that people have to be able to do is to create a rhythm in their presentation. Now, depending on who their, again, who their audience is, so if they are speaking one-on-one, -on -one, it's going to be a much more conversational type of situation. It's not going to be, oh, you know, I'm standing on stage or I'm on video and I'm, you know, looking into that camera lens. And by the way, that's a huge, huge technique. You want to look into a camera lens in order to make that connection, which is what I'm doing right now. I it's would hard, yes. Face. <laughs> or hard. yours, Sheila. But, you know, I, I'm not. I have to look 
look into that little green cyclops, but uh, the idea that you would create a rhythm, meaning you make a point and then you support it with uh, a story and then you ask a question of your audience. And I would call that an application. So an, a show of hands, a what do you think? How have you been doing this? What has your success been like? Um, tell me where your uh, issues are. How can I help you? How do you see this applying to what you're doing? So, you know, exercises, those types of things. Again, it differs uh, um, as to whether you're sitting one-on-one -on -one or in a very small group in an informal situation or whether you're on stage presenting to uh, 50 or more people. Right. I don't know if you follow Nancy Duarte, but uh, she does uh, some really interesting uh, uh, communication. Like she wrote a book, I think it's called, I'm going to botch this, I think it's Resonance, maybe. But it shows how, like you said, you have to have a pattern with your speaking. And she overlays this pattern that she's come up with, and I'm sorry, I can't remember the name of it. But she puts that on top of Martin Luther King Jr. and on Steve Jobs. It's amazing when you said rhythm, that reminded me of that. There's a yes. rhythm and a flow of getting your audience up and down and engaging them. Absolutely. Uh, it is a very... Um it's a very measured approach. It's, it's a, a formula. And um, I, I haven't seen Nancy's formula, although I'm aware of her and I've been to her website, so I'm going to have to look into that. But she's absolutely right. It, it is, I call it rhythm. And that is, you know, the idea that you don't, you, if you're, it's your job to hold people's attention. And that has elements of entertainment. There has to be some self-directed humor. So you have to be able to point to yourself and say, oh, this is where I messed up or, you know, and, 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 and in a way that has you, has your audience know that you're not superwoman, you know, that this is not, it didn't just happen. It took effort and work. And when I do my one days, that's what I show people. I show them. So I go through my story and then I ask everybody, okay. What did I, I just spoke to you nonstop for a half hour. What did I just do? And, you know, they yell at me. Oh, you gave examples. You were funny. You, you know, you had someone else up on stage. You, you used a quote. You um, asked for a show of hands. You know, just a whole bunch of different activities that I put together that kept them engaged and enjoying themselves all the while getting information. I love that. Let me ask you this. You're very, very comfortable on video. And I know you do some vi help coaching with video as well. So a lot of people are trying to now use videos w on their website or for interviews and for different things. Or maybe it's uh, many, many different reasons. But how does someone get comfortable with being on camera? It's tough. Like you said, looking at the um, at the uh, lens instead of looking at someone's eye. It's just it's tough. So what are some tips you might give somebody that's trying to do some just basic video for their website? It is on the job training. <laughs> you cannot get better at video or any of this, frankly, unless you do it. So my advice always to my clients is to G-O-I, get over it, and G-I-D, get it done. I love All right, it. So now that I'm done being flip. No, I really do say those things to my clients, and I say it with a smile. Uh, the situation with video is this. We are very accustomed to seeing ourselves in the mirror, right? We've been looking at ourselves in the mirror since the day we were born. And we very unfortunately equate seeing ourselves in the mirror with the way we look in the mirror with the way we look on video. We expect to see the same thing, but uh-uh, video is different. Video is a complete reverse of what you have seen in the mirror. So an example I like to give is I can get dressed and... Uh, comb my hair, put on some makeup like I'm going out for a client meeting and then look at myself in the mirror and think, yeah, you know, I look good. I'm going <laughs> to, you know, I'm going to go. I'm going to go out now and see my client. And then later that day, same outfit, same makeup, same hair, shoot a video and play it. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, who is that monster? I mean, seriously, my, you know, I home in on all of my facial flaws and asymmetries. What has happened Sheila, is that with the mirror, our eye and our brain, because of the length of time we've all looked in the mirror, really since the day we were born, our eye and our brain have learned to correct 
for all of those facial flaws and asymmetries. And we all have them. We are not symmetrical. With video, however, it is seeing yourself for the very first time. And it is hearing yourself, too. So it's like that first time you heard your voice. Or maybe you're still cringe when you hear yeah. your voice played back. <laughs> you know, well, video is like that, only 100 times more painful. And the only time, they, the only way to get used to it is to keep watching yourself. So what I tell clients to do is to shoot five videos right in a row, short ones, minute long, couple minute videos, and play them back and watch them. That's the trick. That's the key. All right, if you don't play them back and watch them, you're still going to be starting at square one. Play them back and watch them. And by the end of the fifth video, your eye and your brain will have begun to correct for the facial flaws and asymmetries. And you will also know whether your hair looks good in that style or you need more or less makeup or what whether those clothes were the right was the right choice or that background so you know it is on the job training and here's another thing too Sheila I encourage all of your viewers to go to my YouTube channel it which is my channel is Ruth Sherman Ruth Sherman all one word and go back I have about 170 videos up there go back to the earliest ones and look at them and compare them to the ones that are now there's a completely different person. I can hardly look at them, but I leave them up there as a reminder not only to myself, but to my audiences, my clients, so that it's a trajectory. It You get better at it. I love that. I've never heard it explained that way, quite that way, where you said, what well, we do, you, you do think about it. You have seen yourself in the mirror for so long. I didn't realize that you make those adjustments. It does make all the sense because when you first start doing video, it's it's tough. And I, I told you before we started recording that I put this off for a long time. I was going to do a podcast for a while, but I was so afraid to because of my southern accent or dialect, as you said. And, and finally, I had so many people say, don't worry about that. It's part of your southern charm. Just go with it. And And I have embraced that now, but it did take me a bit to get to that point. Absolutely. And it will take you all, it will take everyone a little bit. But you can either decide to do it or, frankly, Sheila, you can be left behind because, let's face it, no matter how skilled you are, no matter how many years in business, no matter how much you love what you do, no matter how much people may love you back, if you cannot command the stage and now the camera, you will continue to be underpaid and underrecognized. You'll continue to labor to attract paying customers. And it doesn't have to be that way. Uh, you know, the ability to, to have these skills and to master these skills is the single critical factor that eliminates those obstacles more quickly than anything else. There's nothing else that can compare to going out and and being on stage or doing a video and connecting with audiences in these unique and compelling ways. I so agree. And I, I think that, you know, it, it makes, it is challenging, but I, I think you can also put some of your humor into it, like you said, a little personality into it and show people that, that you are human. And, you know, I have a lot of people that say, why do you do the video show versus just a podcast? And the main reason is, is because I think people connect so much more when they see a person. It makes such a huge difference to me. I'll tell you, I, I characterize it as a return to face-to-face. -to -face. As a communications expert, I have a master's degree in speech and interpersonal communications. And when I was studying in, you know, ancient, again, ancient history, <laughs> but um, when I was getting my degree, one of the things that we lamented at the time, and this was at the onset of email and, you know, tech, uh, written communication, we lamented the fact that face-to-face -face communication was being substituted by email and text and I am. Now, that human beings are wired to connect face to face. And there is no substitute for the richness of uh, our facial expression, our eye communication, a smile. We have hundreds of muscles in our faces and an almost infinite uh, number of facial expressions that we can make. And meaning, it, it's so rich in meaning, so much richer than just written work, which has no channels for this kind of meaning, for this kind of expression. So very, very, uh, it's not surprising that we're returning to that. And again, it's uh, the technology is finally, finally, it, it's, it's, it's twitchy, but it is absolutely there. I, I, I agree. And you know what worries me a little bit, it's a little bit off 
off subject a tiny bit, but like the younger generation that they, like if they're in the room with you, they'll text you instead of talking to you. So I really am a little worried about our young generation because I don't think that they communicate face to face as much. And I find that they are constantly looking in the mirror and taking pictures of themselves. So it will be very interesting to see what happens with that, <laughs> that younger generation with the way they communicate at this point. It absolutely will, and you know, Generation X and Generation Y are sooner, soon enough, we're going to be leaders. Many of them already are. Uh, so it it will be interesting to see what they bring to the table and how they adjust the workplace and the work style, and how, frankly, we'll have to adjust because they'll be the leaders. So uh, <laughs> you know, at least I'll have to adjust to being a boomer. But uh, you know, that's that's a fascinating thing. You're absolutely right. I think they do bring a lot to the workplace. Certainly, they're very tech savvy and very comfortable with technology. Uh, you're also right. They're more much more comfortable uh, with uh, the you know the photography, the images. They're always uh, using the photography, the, the their smartphones to take some photos, and and they use video pretty. It, they don't think twice about it, so we'll see if that leads to less of the texting from the cubicle next door <laughs> and more toward picking up the phone and calling, but I kind of, I don't know. <laughs> but I do think what they bring to the workplace, I think, is a more measured approach. They're not going to stay and work all night and slave the way generations before them did, I don't think. I uh, so, you know, I think that that's a, a benefit that they bring. So I actually kind of like that as well because, I, you know, b before I owned my current business, Me Giant and the Successful Women Talk, I owned a wholesale furniture and decor business. And it was we were all based, everybody had to be in the office and you had to do this. And over the last couple of years, I've found that you can fully run a business without sitting in an office. And you can have very productive employees out in the virtual world and they're just as productive as the employee sitting in the cube next to you. Absolutely and and you and I both know that there's going there's more and more of it happening and there's more there's going to be more and more of a demand for it because you know this this younger generation doesn't want to have the same kind of family conflicts that so many other people before uh, who came before them had. So it's it's something to admire and to to, to keep our fingers crossed. Exactly. And hope we can I like make that. it work. I don't want to get into the tech part of it too much, but when, when, what type of technology do you use as far as cameras? Can you be very basic with the camera or does someone have to go really high end? Can you give us just a general idea? Sure. I wish I had some with me, but yes, um, yes, no, you don't have to go high end. You know, you and I, well, I don't know what you're on. I'm on my webcam. I assume you are too. Yes, ma'am. I use my webcam a lot, a lot. You know why, Sheila? Because it is integrated. I don't, you know, all I have to do is press start and it's there. And then the file is right there on the uh, hard drive. I don't have to plug anything in and transfer. I have to go, you know, it's, it's a single. Easy. So easy. So that's one thing. Um, I also use my iPhone or I, I have an iPhone, but most smartphones, all of them, frankly, have video capabilities. I use that one for on the go videos and I literally just, you know, will hold it out. Just hold out my arm, you know, uh, just hold out my arm. I call it my arm as a tripod uh, to if I have something to say or I want to or I'm in a pretty place, a unique location, I can easily just pull out my iPhone and shoot a quick video. Uh, I have other pocket cameras. I have an older flip. Unfortunately, they're not available. Well, they're not being made anymore. They are available if you want to buy one wonderful camera. And then I use a Kodak Playtouch, which is another pocket-sized camera. Again, Kodak is out of the camera making business because, and, and these small pocket camera manufacturers um, are out of it because of the, of the smartphone uh, you know the smartphones, yeah, but uh, my understanding is that I don't I I don't use anything more complicated than that. Although I do have more complicated equipment. One of the other things that's really important, Sheila, is light, and that is something that for your video to look good and for the streaming to be not grainy, uh, light is super important. So I the first year and a half, two years, I just used. Um, uh, lights I had in my office, floor lamps, desk lamps, desk lamps. I took the shades off because <laughs> video eats light for dinner. It eats light for dinner. So you just the brighter the light, it won't look as bright on video as you as it may feel on your face. So you want to have it. You want to have it really well lit. The other thing that is wonderful, and especially now that we're still in 
uh, the warm weather months, at least here in the Northeast, uh, we are, um, daylight is, is best. Daylight is always best. Uh, now the days are going to start to get shorter, so it's going to be less of it. But I've positioned my computer in front of a nice big picture window so that daylight is always flooding my face. And that is the most beautiful light, is flattering light. So get outside and shoot video or position your webcam or your camera uh, in front of a window so that you are facing the window. The daylight is coming in on your face. And then finally, you can pick up very inexpensive, what are known as soft boxes, which are, um, you know, they look, they're professional lights, uh, but really un for under $200. In fact, today I am using two soft boxes. I've got one over here. I've got one you know, right there. So one is there, one is there. And, um, you know, they're on my face and they actually uh, make it look as if I'm sitting in front of a window. So I can use these uh, uh, during the day. I can use them at night. Um, it, there's never a um, barrier. But again, you can you can buy those very inexpensively. They're fluorescent. They don't get hot. And I think they're wonderful. I was hoping that you would go down that path because I kind of think the same thing. A lot of people get overwhelmed with the, oh, I can't do it because I don't have all the equipment. But on the iPhone, like you said, it has a terrific video capabilities. And you can even get an external microphone. I mean, there are so many things you can do on a pretty tight budget nowadays when it comes to video. And it's amazing. It, it really is. In, in fact, um, Sheila, I, I just want to let you know that I have uh, assembled a group of 20 experts who are going to be, uh, we're actually doing video conferences and that will launch on the 18th of September called the Charisma Video Event. And it's, it's complimentary, it's free. Uh, so I'll let you know what the website is that so can register, but I've got people who are experts in iPhone, make your iPhone look like a 2000 work, like a $2,000 piece of equipment or your iPad and, and people who do production and marketing and video presence. And so we're covering the whole gamut. So oh, that, people yeah, were then they terrific. We'll link it up. We'll link your site and that up as well on the show notes. Cause I think that would be so valuable. And it's free. So, you know, even the more better. <laughs> Well, this has been amazing. You, you know, I, again, I can't thank you enough for sharing your expertise with us. Let me ask you, if someone wanted to connect with you, where would you want to like to send them? Oh, I would love to send them to my main website, which is ruthsherman.com. And if they sign in there, they will receive a free gift from me, which is my Celebrity Video Charisma Speakrets. I have I had love that. that. <laughs> Speakrets, so it's S P E S P E A K R E T S, speakrets, like secrets, only with the word speak. And uh, they can download that, load that right after they sign up. And plus, they'll, they'll find out everything that I have coming up. So, ruthsherman.com, sign up to get your completely complimentary uh, video charisma celebrity speakrets. And also, Sheila, I would love for people to connect with me on Twitter and Facebook. And uh, again, YouTube and LinkedIn. And my username for all of those is Ruth Sherman. Perfect. And I really encourage you all to go to her website. She's a terrific website. Also, to look at her YouTube videos. You can learn, I mean, just great nuggets of information that you share out there for free for those of us that aren't quite as comfortable as you are on the camera. Thank you. Well, you know, you look pretty comfortable on camera, Sheila, and you know that. Thank you so much. It's it's been real fun today. This has been terrific, Ruth. Thank you, and have a wonderful day. You too. Thanks, Thank you. Sheila. Bye bye. Okay, that's our show, and thanks again for tuning in. Hey, I have a huge, huge favor. I'd like for you to join us over at www.successfulwomentalk.com. Join our email list, and on that list, you'll be a, a VIP. You'll be receiving all of our newest updates, newest interviews, our newsletter, and any tips and tricks we have for organizing your business and getting raving fans and customers that uh, actually just sing your praises. So again, thanks again for tuning in. Check us out next week for another episode of SuccessfulWomenTalk.com. Thanks, guys.